As a runner heads into the last turn, sometimes his energy begins to run out. What he needs then is a source of power. Like a runner getting a second wind, we're not left to carry out the Great Commission without resources. Jesus promised power, and when he has first place in our lives, that power begins to flow. How do we receive it? Stay with us and you'll find out. From Chicago's Moody Church, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Erwin Lutzer continues his new series that tells us what happens when God is first. Turn with us to Acts 1-8, where we're learning that he owns our hearts. Today, the four keys to receiving God's power. First, by yielding. And so you take it and you put it into the ground. That is yielding. The next step is feeding. Feeding. How do you feed? You have two things. You need rain and sunshine. And the rain is God's Word. The rain, as we begin to observe and uh, God's Word, and we begin to read it and meditate it, it is like, like rain that comes from heaven, God says in the book of Isaiah. And so it begins to take the hardened kernels that are so twisted. And those hardened kernels, a shell that has been growing for years and years and years, begins to get soft. And sometimes we have temptations that are so overwhelming that we don't know how to counter those temptations. And so we run for our Bibles and we begin to read the Word of God chapter by chapter by chapter until the power of God's Word lessens the temptation and, and it gives us the strength to be able to say the word no. That's the rain. And then what's the sunshine? It's meeting with the people of God. I've said this before, but I want you to know this very, very clearly. I believe that the Bible teaches that when, when God's people gather together, like we are gathered together here, and thank God there are so many of us who are gathered together, that the presence of the Holy Spirit of God is, is uniquely present among God's people. Yes, He indwells all of us, that's for sure. But He is there when we do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. He is there when we, when we gather together in the name of Jesus with one mind to sing praises to His name, to pray together, to learn together, and to submit together. God is there. And that actually is the sunshine that is needed. And so there's feeding. Then, of course, there's weeding. There's weeding. Because the minute you begin to make this commitment, you fail over here and you sin over here and you slide back over there. And so what are you going to do? Are you going to just simply say, well, you see, it doesn't work. As often as you need to, you get up from your situation and you confess your sin and you get going. Remember that your level of spiritual maturity can be accurately gauged by the length of time between the sin and the confession. Some people say, well, you know, I've already blown it this morning, so I'll just keep sinning all during the day and then I'll get it all straightened out. <laughs> you mean that's never happened to you? I think I know why you're laughing. I'll get it all straightened out. Or I remember being in one church where everybody always confessed their sin every Sunday morning. They kind of let it bunch up. You know, I mean, you know, you're sinning anyway over here and you're sinning over there, but Sunday's coming. The minute we know that we have grieved the Spirit, that's the moment to stop and to say, Jesus, I confess my sin right now. Take this sin away and again restore the fellowship to me. There is weeding. You see, that's what the early church was able to do there in the upper room. We don't have time for the upper room. We are so busy. We we have to hurry through services. And one of the reasons, by the way, we want a family life center over there is so that we can have our service without having classes on both sides. But, but we're, constantly, we're constantly under the gun in terms of time. We say, oh God, I want to be holy, but I have to be holy in a hurry. God says, I'm sorry, but you can't be holy in a hurry. 
And then there's a last step, and this again relates directly to the Holy Spirit. For years I struggled with the filling of the Holy Spirit. For years I used to wonder as a young preacher, how can I be filled with the Spirit? Do I have to talk in tongues? Well, we're going to speak about that next week. Do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? And how do I know it? I attended a denomination that believed that you should come forward and you should seek the filling. And that wasn't wrong. It's just that what do you do when you get up off your knees and you find out the next day that you have the very same struggles? So I wondered, what is the filling of the Spirit? Until I came across a marvelous passage in John chapter 7. You need not turn to it, but you need to listen to it. Jesus said, He who believes in me from within him shall flow rivers of living water. And then it says, This he spoke of the Spirit, which those on, who believe on him should receive. They will receive it when he is glorified. The Spirit it has not yet been poured out, it says, for Jesus was not yet glorified. Now follow this carefully. How did you receive Jesus Christ as Savior? By faith, right? Even though you maybe didn't feel different and even though you wasn't sure whether or not it took, you, you received Him by faith. And then later on you began to say, hey, there are changes here. How do we receive the fullness of the Spirit? And I'm talking about the Spirit's fullness, not the indwelling, which all of us have as believers. You receive the Spirit's fullness by faith, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. Just as we depend upon the crucified Christ for forgiveness, in the very same way we depend upon the ascended Christ who poured forth the gift of the Holy Spirit, we depend upon the ascension of Christ and the poured forth Spirit in simple faith to receive for His fullness. Just before I stand up to speak, what do you think I'm thinking about? Well, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say. I hope I have something prepared, and I think usually I do. But that's not really what's on my mind. In my heart, I'm praying to God, and I need to tell you exactly as I pray. I always say this. Father, I thank you today that Jesus Christ poured forth the gift of the Holy Spirit.